Welcome to Arapaho Park, where as you can see behind me, there are horses on the track and they're putting in their training to be able to get ready for race day. I'm Jonathan Horowitz, the announcer of the horse races at Arapaho Park. And on this episode of Gates Open at Arapaho Park, we'll show you a side of horse racing that you don't normally get to see. The morning workouts as horses prepare for races in much the same way that professional sports teams hold practices. And later we'll take you back to the stable area and show you what's equivalent of the locker room at the horse races. So this is a behind the scenes look of horse racing and you can come out to Arapaho Park in the mornings. It's a great compliment to seeing the races in the afternoon to be able to see the morning workouts and see the effort that the jockeys, that the trainers, the exercise riders have to put in to get ready for race day. Barn number 18, the barn of Stacy Rushton, and introducing you again to Maybe Grand, a horse that we met last year as a yearling, a one year old, after she had been bred by Ted Trounsel and went through the Silver Cup horse sale. Cimarron Gurky at his farm in Brighton was helping start off the career for Maybe Grand, and now Maybe Grand has made it to Arapaho Park to begin her racing career as a two year old. Cimarron, we met you last year with Maybe Grand. What did Maybe Grand? Grand have to learn as a yearling to prepare her for this moment? Well, she had to learn to be handled properly, uh, take a bridle, a saddle, uh, learning how to go out and learning what's not to be scared of stuff, uh, learning how to walk, truck, canter, uh, stretch her legs out. And uh, today was going to be her first little breeze down the lane and just keep on preparing her for her up and coming races. So her first workout in preparation for her first race, how has she progressed? It looks like she, she's grown a little bit. Yeah, she's really grown a lot. She's really, her body's maturing uh, just as much, as fast as we'd like it to. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's completely up to her, but I think she has a, from what I've seen from her already, she's got a good mind and a competitive edge. So I think she's gonna enjoy life at the track. And for a horse that comes onto the track for the first time, from what you've seen, what is generally their reaction? Oh, they normally look around a lot and everything, but uh, and that's fine. And as long as they, you know, don't do anything wrong, they can. It just goes from there. Uh, she's seen so much out, out at the farm. Luckily, like I have a lot to expose them to out there, and so I try to get it to where you know when they move in here, it's not that big of a change. And uh, I try to prepare them as best I can with showing them as much as I can, uh, not pushing them too hard, too fast, but just uh, keeping them the right amount to where they're healthy and happy. How has she adjusted to life at the racetrack now being here in the barn area? Oh, really well. She she doesn't mind it at all. She she lo she loves to go to the track, and she, when she comes back, she wants to eat and sleep, and that's what you want a baby to do. And so as we prepare for today's workout, what's the steps? I mean, you talk about athletes and what they have to do when they train. What's the training process for a horse? Well, well you got to get a lot of miles in them and so that their shins are tight and uh, their knee, try to get their knees closed up as much as we can before the race and just get them overall fit. And that happens by uh, like, well, a good feed program and a good exercise program and, and keeping them happy and enjoying their job. Or I mean, because if they don't enjoy their job, they're not going to do it. Let's see it all happen and so tell us what you're going to do you're going to tack the horse up and and then what are we going to see we're gonna, out on the racetrack well we're going to tack her up and uh we're going to lead her down to shed row i'll have stacy leg me up and uh i got company coming with uh ryan stivers and we're going to just warm them up around the turn there and then uh when we come around by the quarter pole we're going to let them stretch out for the first time and come down the lane and see how it goes from there so this is where it all starts. It started this way with all the great horse racing champions and a lot of hope for Maybe Grand as she prepares to begin her racing career. And now let's get her ready to come onto the track. Yep. Ted Trounsel bred and owns Maybe Grand, a horse sired by Grand Minstrel, the first full out of the damn Bees Gal. It was kind of like lightning in a bottle with Bees Gal as she was a $800 yearling purchase, and then she goes on to a great career, making more than $100,000. And I'm sure you'd like to be able to do that with maybe Grand. Now you bred the horse, so when you got the full to now, what has been your relationship with maybe Grand and how has she progressed in your mind? Well, Roger Barb and I uh, are partners on the breeding of the horse. And uh, we added up at Minolton Farms with Linda Woods, who's wonderful. She's very, she's got a beautiful farm in Montrose. And uh, it's just been, you know, 
to progressing and growing up. And it's a beautiful place. It's made for horses out there, you know, to grow up. And then uh, it's just been a, a process. It's a long deal because you get a year, you know, that the, the mare's pregnant, he's a gal, and then you got a, then the baby, and you got another year and another year, you know, before you get to the races. So it's just a process that you go through and you hope everything goes right. How did you get into breeding and owning horses? Well, I, I started back at Centennial. I had a couple uh, with uh, Bob Rosenquist back then. He was, he was pretty good back then. And then just continued with that various horses over the time here in Colorado. And what is your favorite part about the breeding process and owning process? Because, like you said, there's so it, much involved. It's like raising a kid, you know, you just get to watch them grow and progress. It, it's cool. It really is. And what are your goals with Maybe Grand? Well, Maybe Grand, we're going to try. You got it with a two-year-old, you got to see what happens. You know, if they stay healthy and don't chin buck, and, you know, you, you play it by ear with a two-year-old. And we got her uh, entered in the Lassie, the Colorado bred uh, Philly race. And we'll see if she gets to that. As an owner, what is your favorite part as far as you can see the behind the scenes or you see the finished product? Do you prefer the process or do you prefer well, the I finished mean, product? Well, Roger and I come out every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday before work. And we come by for an hour or two, you know, pet the horses, watch them go out on the track and all that. And then we go to work. And then the, nothing more exciting than winning. When they win, you get in that win picture. It's a different excitement. It really is. The way I look at it, it's kind of like owning your own sports team. Sure. Yeah, you, you are, and the and the trainer's the coach. You know, so you, it is very it's very athletic, and uh, you just go through. So we're seeing training camp here now. Let's go out to the track and see how we'll go to the track. And this is the first time she'll get down. You know, she's going to run down the lane. So this this is another first experience. And it's great to be able to see those behind the scenes. So thank you for the access to, to Maybe Grand and to allow us to really see how a racehorse grows we, up. We appreciate it because uh, we get to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks. Nighthawk Ranch. Nighthawk Ranch is located in Guffey, Colorado. And we buy Mustangs from the BLM and we train them for use with these kids that are recovering from cancer. It's like a team from day one, the kid and the horse. And, and they feel really comfortable, they feel safe on the horse, they feel a part of the horse, they feel a part of the program. And, and it's, it's a bond they don't experience a lot in their lives. So the kids have their own horse for the week, learn to ride if they haven't ridden before. We spend a lot of time with animals in the morning and then in the afternoons we have more camping events archery, ropes course, building a log cabin, camping out overnight, a little bit of everything. I have a lot of cancer in my family. I'm a cancer survivor, and we believe that Nighthawk Ranch has a lot of natural healing on its own. It was a great healing force in my life, and we believe that sharing that with these kids, that's important. So clean air, clean food, great experience is all, is all positive for these kids for sure in their healing. The 2016 live horse racing season in Colorado at Arapaho Park from May 20th to August 14th. Racing takes place on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and special holiday racing on Mondays for Memorial Day and the 4th of July. Post time for the first race each day is at 1 o'clock p.m. For more information, visit myhighracing.com and facebook.com slash Arapaho Racing. Arapaho Park, where horses come first. We're good. Yeah. Thanks.
<laughs> Smile, Randy. Just don't take off and leave me if that happens. <laughs> I think she'll roll, but. Like head to head, aren't they? Come on, baby, Grant. Come on, baby. Pick it up. That's good. That's her first. We've been around since 1972. We are the voice of the horse industry and what we try to do is be aware of what's going on in the legislature, in different developments, different municipalities, so that we can maintain horses as part of our life and lifestyle. We're here to make sure that the powers and the rights of people to own horses remains the same as it has been for many, many years. Horses are extremely important to our heritage, it's important to our economy. We're a $1.6 billion industry in the state of Colorado, and there's over 156,000 people involved with our industry. So I think we have a real important role in the economy, but also in the lifestyle and what horses bring to each one of us. Come on board and get involved with us in our Blue Ribbon Partnership Program and show others your passion about the lifestyle and about owning horses. I can't tell. 
Just letting her sit here a minute and soak it in. Just kind of get just a preview of what they're what she's going to expect. Ah, <clears throat> uh, I describe it pretty good. She uh that other horse had a little more experience and uh, she kind of, she didn't really know what we were asking her to do because we haven't asked her for that much yet. And she kind of looked around and was just kind of a little, didn't really, kind of a little lost. But you know, the next one, I think she'll have, she'll kind of have a lot better idea and she'll figure it out. She just got a little confused, but I mean, that's, it's typical of a, with, with a two year old and especially just this early in the game with her. She had a she had a burst of speed there at first, and then she kind of got to looking around, and then she's like, oh, she, she didn't know, if she's you know she never went that fast before, so she kind of didn't really know how to react to it, but it'll come. She actually uh, kind of come back. She she started off pretty good, and then kind of started looking around and kind of hesitated, and then. You know, about 100 yards before the wire, she picked it back up a little bit. So that's a good sign show, showing that, you know, she's just kind of looking around and thinking about stuff. But then she went back to what comes natural to her, and she, then she wanted to run. Uh, just to get them used to all of this, because there's going to be hundreds of people right here. And so I want, her, I want her to get real comfortable on this paddock before there is a bunch of people. and all the noises and music and announcers and you know just everything all the loud sounds and people screaming and everything I want her to know that this is a safe place and that she doesn't need to be scared of it and what's the next step for her? Uh, well a, f a couple more works get her gate approved and uh, you know get, then probably try to look for a, ma a little maiden race eventually but yeah we're gonna need a few more works uh, and definitely get gate approved I took her to the gates yesterday and we walked through them and uh, butted her up and then uh, just let her step out and she did really well. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, well, that's the next step. So just getting her gate approved and get some more works and uh, just getting her as comfortable as we can get her everywhere. And we'll take her back to the barn and cool her out and get her on the walker. The 2016 live horse racing season in Colorado at Arapahoe Park from May 20th to August 14th. Racing takes place on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and special holiday racing on Mondays for Memorial Day and the 4th of July. Post time for the first race each day is at 1 o'clock p.m. For more information, visit myhighracing.com and facebook.com slash Arapahoe Racing. Arapahoe Park, where horses come first. Maybe Grand is cooling off behind us after having her first time stretching out on the racetrack and she's cooling off with another one of Stacy Rushton's horses, Sweet and Down. And Ted, when you saw the horse working out for the first time, what were your impressions? Well, she did everything, uh, everything good. You know, she looked a little, but she, that's her first time. And uh, I'm happy uh, with the way everything came out. She came back good and Cimarron did a good job. And she worked in company with another horse. What's yeah, the Ryan, Ryan Stivers, a friend of ours, he worked one in company. It's to get them, you know, when they in the races, you're going to be by somebody. 
and Cimarron working in company, how did she handle it? She handled it good. She wasn't spooking. Uh, she got right next to that other horse, wasn't afraid. And uh, she kind of looked a little, looked around a little bit and just kind of had like a pause and just, she had never gone that fast before. And so she didn't really know what we were asking. And then about a hundred yards later, she started figuring it out. And, and so we look for to improve, you know, every time just to keep improving and until we get to the race. Yeah, and she changed her leads. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, she switched leads well. Switch and, leads. Uh, and, you know, and I for us what that means, switching uh, leads. Well, switch leads, like when they come around the turn, you want to be in your left lead, so your left foot's hitting the ground, stretching out, hitting the ground first. And then uh, when we go to head for home is what they call it, you switch to your right lead, so you save, like when they're going around the turn, they save that energy on the right side of their body, so they have a, a, a lo extra little kick to come down the lane when they switch leads there. And that's important to be able to teach them like when I teach them to lean, I'm, I lean to, or when I teach them to switch leads, I lean to the outside, and they know that that means to switch to your left to, and go to the right. I'll lean to the inside, so they know to switch to their, their rights. And it's just just a bit, a little bit of a pull of the bridle and a little bit of weight change, and that's how they figure out how to do that. And uh, but it, it has to be taught. It's not something they automatically do, but it's it's trained into them, and so then they and they figure it out, and it feels natural to them, and then they they just they end up automatically doing it when you ask. So. But it's it's something they need to learn, so you know when to. So when your jockey, he can feel when they, the, that side of their body's rested enough to switch to that other lead, and then they can handle the turn when they switch back to to go around the corner. Yeah, because if they don't, they'll tire out on that one lead. What's your uh, thoughts about how Cimarron's helped get this horse? Cimarron's done everything perfect. He's been patient with a two-year-old. You don't want to see how fast they are. You know, you don't want to go out there and work in 34, 35. Uh, the, you, you, it's a gradual process, and he's done everything just fantastic. Very happy. Yeah, I'm. Don't just, tell him that. Though. I, I'm just glad. You know, <laughs> the worst thing that, that you could have done is a horse work too hard, too fast, and then come back sore. So yeah. that we avoided that. So it sounds like this went exactly as, as yeah. you wanted it. Oh no, it, it, it's uh, for a, you know any, anything in a first time, and to learn something that's huge. And what will she do now that she's had her first work? What, what's the next process? Uh, well, for her? she'll have a few days rest, and then we'll go back to galloping and probably work, start working on doing, getting our gate work. And what do you need to be able to? You don't just show up on the racetrack. What, what's the, the sort no. of certification uh, process? She's got to have two qualified works, one out of the gate and be gate approved to be able to enter a race. How do they work that one out of the gate? Do they do the three furlongs from breaking out of the gate or mm -hmm. do you slow it down and then go? You, you Normally what we do is we'll let them go all the way to the three eighths and then slow them down in the turn, let them rest a little bit and then just kind of let them gallop out. Then the take lane. off for the yeah, three and, furlongs. Mm -hmm. So it's not out of the gate for three furlongs. No, because that'd be six then, so yeah. Okay. Be, yeah, you just kind of slow down and let them rest and then kind of let them gallop out down the lane. and. Because you just you, you just can't do too much too fast or too soon. So, Ted, what races are you looking at for this season? I'm. Uh, we got her entered in the uh, the Lassie, which is Colorado bred Philly two year olds, and then I also uh, with the the new race uh, debutante, which they're having an open Philly two year old, but the track is adding twenty thousand for a Silver Cup sale Philly. And they're breaking, from what I understand, they're breaking that down 70, 20, 10. So if you got lucky enough, you know, it's going to be a $35,000, $40,000 race. And then if you could win, you're going to pick up 14000 because you were a sale horse. But it's open company, so it's going to be a little tougher. But And that's by money earned, too. So you have high hopes for her. Oh, yeah, sure. But it, to the point, she's going along good. You know, if things aren't going good, you can wait till next year. You got to be patient. Sure, but but she seems to have seems checked every, every box every, so every, far. So far, we haven't missed a lick. Well, outstanding. Thank you, and wishing you the best with maybe Grand and good girl. So that's a look at what it takes to be a racehorse with the morning workouts and the preparation that goes into getting ready for race day. Thank you to owner Ted Trouncel, trainer Stacy Rushton, and Cimarron Gurky, who's helped raise maybe a grand since she was a one-year-old horse, since she was a yearling, and now getting ready to begin her racing career as a two-year-old. 
The racing action in the afternoon starts at 1 o'clock on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Looking forward to welcoming you to Arapaho Park after you had the chance to see this behind the scenes look of the preparation that goes into being a racehorse. Until your next time out at the races, I'm Jonathan Horowitz. Keep picking winners.